In this video, we are going to use integration to find the lateral surface area of a solid of revolution. Um, we do this the same way that we, um, we derive this formula the same way that we derive the formulas for all the other sections. So in the first section or lesson in this chapter, we found the area between two curves by breaking that up into n rectangles and then finding the area of each rectangle and then adding them back up and taking the limit as the number of rectangles went to infinity. Then when we wanted to find the volume of a solid with known cross, section, uh, cross sections, we found the volume of one slice and then we added those up and took the limit as the number of slices went to infinity and that gave us an integral. Um, then we looked at arc length we said we want to find the length of a curve, but we can't do that without calculus. The problem is that it's curving. So we split that up into n pieces. We found the length of the line segment connecting one end of the curve to another end of the curve for each of those n pieces. And then we added them together and took the limit as the number of pieces went to infinity, and that gave us the arc length integral. In this section, we're doing pretty much the same thing. If I want to find the surface area of a solid of revolution, I need to um, break it up into n pieces and find the surface area for one piece. So let, let me give you a picture. Let's say we have y equals f of x, and it's up here. And let's say we have a horizontal line, y equals c down here and I may be interested in the region between y equals f of x and y equals c. That's also between the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b. So this is my region. Now if I take that region and I revolve it about the line y equals c, it's gonna look something like this. And I'm gonna do the best I can trying to draw the reflection of this. So that actually is probably going to be about right there, and that is going to be maybe there. So I'm going to see something like that. And then this distance is approximately there, and I think it's going to go out like that. Ah, do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm drawing pretty much the same picture that I drew in the section when we found volumes of solid of revolution. Now, I'm going to slice this the same way that we sliced for the disk method. So we're going to slice perpendicular to our axis. But now, instead of thinking about the volume of the disk, we're going to think about like adding a piece of paper around our solid of revolution. So on the other side, it looks like that. So I've got a strip of paper that's going around this vase shape. Actually reminds me a lot of, of this. This is exactly what we're talking about. You see my coffee cup? Went to Panera today. It's so good. If I want the surface area of this cup, which could be found by finding a solid, or it could be um, a solid of revolution, um, one way that I can do it is I can put these little strips of paper around my cup and then find the area of one strip of paper. Um, so that's exactly what we've got going over here. I've got a solid of revolution and I've imagined putting n strips of paper around my solid or like this. I've got one strip of paper but there are going to be n of them um, down the length of the cup. So if I want the lateral surface area of the solid of revolution and lateral surface area just means this the surface area of the green part of my cup not the surface area of the top or the bottom, but just the green part. That's the lateral surface area. If I want the surface area of this, so without that end cap and without that end cap, um, I just need to find the area of these little strips of paper that are going around my cup. Okay, so let's write down the method as we've outlined it so far. We always sketch the region And of course the axis. Then we sketch the reflection.
and then we slice perpendicular to the axis. almost like you're using the disk method to find the volume of this thing. Now, instead of finding the volume of the disk, I'm imagining putting a little piece of paper all the way around my disk and trying to find the surface area of that piece of paper. So we've sliced perpendicular to the axis. We have wrapped each of those end pieces, or we've sliced perpendicular to the axis um, to form end pieces. and we've imagined wrapping a little piece of paper around each piece. Then if I want to find the surface area of this whole thing, I just need to find the surface area of one piece. So that's our next step. And the letter that we tend to use for surface area, this is the surface area of the ith piece, as i goes from one to n, is capital S sub i. I know it looks a lot like arc length. Arc length is lowercase s, capital S is for surface area. Okay, so if I wanna find the surface area of this guy, I just take my little strip of paper, which looks like this, and I cut it down one side. It's just like taking my Panera sleeve. Oh, trying to cut it. Here are my scissors. And I cut it down one side, and then I unfold it. And then I find the area of this little piece. If I can find the area of this piece, I can find the area of the solid of revolution, or the lateral um, surface area of the solid of revolution. I just need to do this n times. So I've taken my little sleeve, just like the heat protector on your coffee cup, and I've cut it, and then I unfold it, and then I try to find the surface area of this guy. Now, when I draw it, it looks more like a rectangle because it's gonna be very thin. It's not gonna be perfectly rectangular. There are gonna be some, there's gonna be a little bit of curvature like you see here. But if N is very small, it's almost a rectangle. And then the question becomes, okay, well, what is the length of this side and the length of this side? Because the surface area, the area of this piece, or the area of this little piece, is just this dimension times this dimension. And we're thinking of it as a rectangle, but of course that's an approximation. And it is going to become like a rectangle in the limit as the number of pieces goes to infinity. Um, so we want to find the area of this piece. Well, to find the area, I need this dimension. Well, this dimension is that length all the way around our piece. So what does that mean? How does that relate to the radius of this little disk that we've put a piece of paper around the outside of? I hope you said, well, if this is my radius, so my radius starts at the axis and goes up like this. That's r, r sub i. This is the circumference. The distance all the way around the outside of the circle is 2 pi r. So this distance right here is oops, 2 pi r. And be careful here. This distance is not delta x. I know we used delta x when we were talking about the width of our little disk, but look at that piece of paper. It has a little bit of curvature to it. That was not a little change in x. Like if I put these pieces back together, look, if that's at the top of my curve, it's not exactly delta x, it's a little bit longer. Do you see it? It's that dimension. What is that dimension? I hope you said arc length. It's a tiny length of a curve. So this is going to be arc length. So S sub i is circumference times arc length. 
that's the length of the ith piece or the area of the ith, ith piece, excuse me. All right, so now we're here. And if we want to find the surface area, the lateral surface area of the whole thing, we need to find um, the radius and the arc length in terms of the same variable. Now, we've got two ways of representing arc length. We could write arc length in terms of x, and we can write arc length in terms of y. Um, so arc length is either the square root of 1 plus x prime squared times delta y, or the square root of 1 plus y prime squared times delta x. And that radius can actually be written two ways. This is the top y value minus the bottom y value in our picture. But I can think of this as a y minus a constant. So in this picture, it is literally just y minus the constant c, whatever c happens to be. Or I can think of this as a function of x. y is a function of x on this curve, minus y is a function of x on that curve. So this can be written in terms of x or y. We are still slicing perpendicular to the axis, um, which is going to lead to solids of revolution that look like this. I might think that I have to integrate with respect to x, but I actually don't. Um, I can find that arc length in terms of y if I want to using this, and that's legal. That'll work as long as I also find my radius in terms of y. And we're going to see in some examples um, how that happens. So that is what it looks like when you're slicing perpendicular to the x-axis. Um, but remember, this can be written both ways. This could be written as a y minus a y, or a y value minus a y value in terms of y, or in terms of x. And then you just have to be consistent with that. Now, I can draw my picture the other way. Suppose you have a function that looks like this. We have x equals a function of y, and we're revolving it around some line. Um, x equals a constant. I'm just going to use L this time. And we're interested in the solid of revolution, or the, the region that's bounded by y equals c and y equals d, this function and this line. So maybe it looks like this. I'm going to extend this a little bit. Now, if I sketch the reflection of this about this line, y equals l, it's going to be another kind of vase shape it's because I make it all these sort of curly looking, curvy. Eh-ish, it's okay. Um, so this gets reflected over here and it looks like this. And then we're going to imagine a solid of revolution that's formed from this. Now this looks like a fancy glass at a restaurant. Maybe you've got some kind of like drink, that, some umbrella drink that you're drinking out of this fancy glass. Um, so we've got a solid of revolution that looks like this. And a typical slice looks like this. I slice perpendicular to the axis again, but instead of creating a disk, I'm looking at the outside of the disk. I am wrapping a piece of paper around my solid of revolution. And so it looks a little bit like this. That's what it looks like on the back edge, but we can't see it. So when I want the surface area, I take this little piece of paper, which looks like this, and I cut it down one side. And then I unfold it. And this dimension that's still the circumference. That's still 2 pi times the radius. 
This time though, the radius is the distance from here to here. So that's my r sub i. And this distance is still the arc length. And that can be written in terms of x or y. So surface area is still 2 pi times the radius times the arc length. Now you do not have to integrate this one with respect to y, even though your picture might imply it. You can find this radius in terms of y, or you can find this radius in terms of x, and either one would be fine. Both of them are going to give you the right answer. Now, um, some textbooks talk about this idea in a slightly different way. They don't talk about finding a solid of revolution and then finding its lateral surface area. Instead, they talk about revolving a curve around a line. So they're not thinking about taking this whole region and revolving it about a line and then focusing on the lateral surface area of the region. They're just imagining taking this and revolving it about the line. And because we're just taking the line and revolving it around, we get a surface. So it's not a solid, but it's, it's like the surface of my cup. So it's this, like with no coffee inside. Um, so they've taken some curve and revolved it and they get something that's hollow. They say, well, what's the area of that? Um, so when you're watching videos online, if you see someone talking about taking a curve and revolving it about a line, know that that's going to give you the same thing as the lateral surface area of this solid that comes from taking this whole region and revolving it about a line. With your test questions, and the way the problems are posed in this class, I will always refer to it as the lateral surface area of a solid of revolution. But remember, as you're looking at examples, um, you can always think of this as just a curve that's been rotated. And then because it's a curve that was rotated, what happens is we get something that's 2D. So it's not a solid, but a surface, a surface that looks like this and it's hollow inside. Oh, there's the rest of my coffee. So that's the idea in the next video we will actually solve some of these problems.